As I sit here, surrounded by the soft glow of my desk lamp, my mind wanders back to the days of my youth, to a time when I first discovered a world that felt more like home to me than I could have ever imagined. My name is Margaret, and I want to share with you the beginning of a journey that has shaped my very being. Growing up, I was always the shortest boy in my all-boys school. This physical trait, seemingly inconsequential at the time, steered my life in a direction I hadn't foreseen. It was in this school, amid the laughter and roughhousing of boys, that I stumbled upon a sliver of my true self. The school plays were a big deal, a break from the monotony of daily lessons, and a chance for us to shine in different roles. Because of my height, I was often cast in female roles. The first time it happened, I was just seven years old, selected to play the daughter of Rosie O'Grady. I remember the mixed feelings of surprise and excitement that washed over me as the costume was fitted onto my small frame. At first, it was all about the play, the acting, and the applause. But as I stood there on stage, draped in a dress that swished around my legs, something within me stirred. A sense of rightness, a thrill that went beyond the bright stage lights and the eyes of the audience. I loved the attention, sure, but it was more than that. It was the way the fabric felt against my skin, the way the dress allowed me to move and express myself. It was a revelation, a silent whisper to my soul that said, this is who you are. Of course, I couldn't share these feelings with anyone. In the world I lived in, boys were supposed to scorn anything remotely feminine. But in those moments on stage, in the sparkle of the costumes and the glow of the footlights, I found a piece of myself that I dared not reveal to the outside world. This was the beginning, the first delicate threads of a tapestry I would weave throughout my life. As I played my part on stage, little did I know that this was merely the prologue to a much larger story, one that would eventually lead me to embrace the person I was always meant to be. But back then, I was just a child, stepping into a dress, stepping into a new realm of possibilities, unwittingly crossing the threshold into a world where I could be my true self, if only for a brief moment on the stage. At the age of 12, when childhood innocence began to intertwine with the tendrils of adolescence, an unexpected encounter nudged my journey further along its hidden path. It was Polly, our neighbor, whose presence in my life until then had been as ordinary and unremarkable as the neatly trimmed hedges dividing our homes. Polly was known in our neighborhood for her magical hands, skilled in sewing and alterations, transforming fabric into art. I had always admired her work from a distance, never imagining that it would soon intertwine with my own story. One crisp autumn morning, as golden leaves danced playfully in the breeze, Polly approached my mother with a request. She needed help with fitting some clothes, and somehow I had come to mind. My mother, ever so practical and helpful, agreed without a second thought, volunteering me for the task. To her, it was a simple neighborly favor, a way to teach me responsibility and perhaps learn a useful skill. But neither of us could grasp the depth of this seemingly mundane request. That evening, my mother relayed Polly's request to me. I remember feeling a curious blend of surprise and intrigue, a flutter of excitement tinged with an indefinable emotion that I couldn't quite place. The thought of being involved in something so closely related to dressing and clothes, even in such an innocent context, rekindled the embers of feelings I had experienced on stage, wearing those costumes that felt more like extensions of myself than mere fabric. The following afternoon, with the air carrying the last whispers of summer, I walked the short distance to Polly's house, my heart a delicate drumbeat of anticipation and nervousness. I remember standing at her door, taking a deep breath before stepping into her world, a realm filled with the scent of fresh fabric and the soft hum of a sewing machine. Polly welcomed me with a warm smile, her eyes crinkling at the corners, a silent acknowledgement of a shared secret that I was yet to understand. She led me to her sewing room, a cozy sanctuary brimming with colorful threads, buttons, and swaths of fabric, each piece whispering possibilities. As she explained the task at hand, I felt an unfamiliar sense of belonging, standing there among the dresses waiting to be altered. With each word Polly spoke, I sensed an unspoken understanding passing between us, a recognition of something unexpressed 
but deeply felt. That day, as I stepped into the role of a mannequin, allowing Polly to drape fabrics over me, marking and pinning them to fit, I embarked on a voyage of self-discovery that went far beyond the stitches and seams of dressmaking. In Polly's quiet presence, I found a safe harbor, a place where the undercurrents of my identity could swirl and gather strength, preparing me for the journey ahead. This was more than a neighborly favor. It was a gentle push toward a destiny that beckoned with soft, welcoming hands, guiding me toward a future where the reflection I saw in the mirror would match the image I had long harbored in the secret corners of my heart. The first time I stepped into Polly's sewing room as more than just a neighbor, the afternoon sun spilled through the window, casting a warm glow that filled the space with a comforting light. I was there under the guise of helping with simple tasks, my mind still naive to the profound turn my life was about to take. Polly, with her knowing smile, led me to a corner of the room where several dresses hung, their colors vibrant against the soft backdrop of the room. My eyes widened in surprise when she explained that she needed me to try them on for the alterations. For a fleeting moment, I hesitated, a whirlpool of excitement and uncertainty churning within me. As I slipped into the first dress, a cascade of fabric flowed around me, whispering secrets of a hidden self I was only just beginning to acknowledge. Polly's hands were gentle and precise as she pinned and tucked, transforming the garment to fit my form. With each pull of the thread and snug adjustment, I felt a barrier within me giving way, unveiling a part of my identity that had longed for expression. The sensation of the dress hugging my body was both foreign and familiar, stirring memories of those brief moments on stage, yet magnifying them with an intensity that was both startling and exhilarating. Standing there, in front of Polly's full-length mirror, I saw a reflection that echoed the truth of my inner world, a truth that, until then, had been a silent companion on my journey. Polly's demeanor held no judgment, only an encouraging nod that seemed to say, this is okay, this is you. Her acceptance was a balm to the nervous flutter in my chest, easing the tension of years of unspoken questions and hidden desires. As we continued with the fittings, each dress became a chapter in a story that was writing itself within me, revealing desires and facets of my identity that I had only dared to explore in the most private recesses of my mind. Polly's sewing room, surrounded by fabric and threads, became a sanctuary where I could experiment and express myself without fear or shame. That afternoon marked the beginning of my journey into cross-dressing, one that was unexpected but deeply transformative. With each visit to Polly's house, I delved deeper into the exploration of my identity, each dress a new discovery, each fitting a step closer to understanding myself. In the quiet comfort of her sewing room, I embarked on a path of self-discovery and acceptance, with Polly as my unexpected guide, her sewing room a gateway to a world where I could finally be true to myself. As the days turned into weeks, my visits to Polly's became the highlights of my afternoons. Each session in her sewing room brought new revelations, and my initial shyness gave way to a budding confidence. The dresses and the act of wearing them had started as a functional necessity for alterations, but they grew into something far more significant for me. One day, amidst the swish of fabric and the rhythmic hum of the sewing machine, a thought struck me. To truly capture the essence of how these dresses were meant to drape and sway, wouldn't shoes, heels to be precise, make a difference? The suggestion, when it left my lips, surprised even me. But Polly just looked at me with a soft, knowing smile, as if she had been waiting for me to reach this point. Bringing out a pair of heels that seemed to wait for their moment, Polly watched as I slipped them on. The click of heels against the floor was like a new language for my feet, teaching me poise and grace with every step. The mirror now reflected not just a boy in a dress, but a figure that resonated with the harmony of my concealed self. With the heels came the need for stockings and garters, the silk whispering against my skin, a tactile symphony that played to the deepest parts of my soul. Every piece of clothing, every accessory, felt like a puzzle piece clicking into place, 
completing a picture I had only glimpsed in dreams. Polly's role in my transformation took on a new depth. She introduced me to the delicate art of makeup, each brush stroke on my face painting away the remnants of the boy I was outside her door, revealing the person I felt like inside. The makeup was not just about appearance. It was a rite of passage, a ritual that celebrated and acknowledged my identity. The final touch was a wig that cascaded down in soft waves, framing my face and completing the transformation. As I looked in the mirror, it was as if the person I had been pretending to be all my life had stepped aside, revealing the true essence of my being. In Polly's sewing room, surrounded by the tools of her trade, I found a haven where I could express the full spectrum of my identity. Each item of clothing, each accessory, was a thread in the fabric of my being, woven into a tapestry of self-expression and discovery. This deepening engagement with cross-dressing was more than just dressing up. It was a journey to the core of my identity, guided by the gentle and accepting presence of Polly. It was a transformation that went beyond the external, touching the very essence of who I was and who I was meant to be. As my relationship with Polly deepened, it became more than just a mentorship or a neighborly friendship. It evolved into a secret bonding, a shared understanding that went beyond words. Our meetings in her sewing room became my sanctuary, a place where I could explore and express my cross-dressing identity without fear of judgment or misunderstanding. Polly, with her wisdom and kindness, became the guardian of my secret world. She understood the stakes of what we were doing and the societal norms we were defying. Despite the closeness of our families, she never once betrayed my trust. She never whispered a word of my cross-dressing to my parents. This secrecy was not born out of deceit, but from a deep respect for my journey and the fragile exploration of my identity. In the cocoon of Polly's home, I found the freedom to experiment and discover the nuances of my persona. Our sessions were filled with laughter and learning, but also with serious moments where Polly would share insights and stories, guiding me through the complexities of identity and self-acceptance. Her support was unwavering, a steady hand in the tumultuous sea of my adolescence. The secrecy of our bond added a thrilling yet daunting layer to our relationship. There was always a lingering fear of discovery, a shadow that followed me back home after each visit, Yet, this secret also forged between us a deeper connection, a pact of trust and understanding that was rare and precious. Polly's role in my life was pivotal. She was the confidant who saw beyond the facade of the young boy everyone else saw. She recognized the yearning in my eyes, the silent plea for acceptance and understanding. In her presence, I was not just playing a role or wearing a costume. I was unveiling the deepest truths of my soul. This secret bonding with Polly became the bedrock of my cross-dressing journey, a journey that was as much about discovering my identity as it was about navigating the complexities of trust and confidentiality. In the safety of her sewing room, I could be Margaret in all her truth, shedding the confines of societal expectations and basking in the unconditional acceptance that Polly offered. Our secretive yet supportive relationship was a delicate dance of truth and concealment, a dance that allowed me to grow, to experiment, and to become more comfortable with who I truly was. In this hidden sanctuary, I learned the invaluable lessons of self-love and courage, emboldened by the safety net that Polly's secrecy provided. Over time, my visits to Polly's transcended the initial pretext of altering clothes, they morphed into sessions of transformation and acceptance, where Polly no longer altered dresses just for practicality, but specifically for me, Margaret. This subtle yet profound shift marked a new chapter in my journey, one where cross-dressing became an integral part of my self-discovery and expression. The dresses Polly crafted were no longer just garments to be fitted and adjusted. They became expressions of my identity, tailored to reflect the person I was on the inside. Each piece of clothing was a testament to my evolving self, a tangible manifestation of the internal changes I was experiencing. Polly, with her intuitive understanding, seemed to sew not just with thread, but with strands of acceptance and affirmation, stitching together pieces of my fragmented identity. 
These sessions in Polly's sewing room became sacred times of transformation. As she measured, cut, and sewed, we would talk about life, dreams, and the complexities of identity. In these conversations, I found the courage to voice thoughts and feelings I had never articulated before, exploring the depths of my being in the safety of her nurturing presence. The act of wearing the clothes Polly made specifically for me was incredibly affirming. Each outfit felt like a piece of armor, emboldening me to face the world with newfound confidence. In her mirror, I saw not just a reflection of a boy in a dress, but the emergence of Margaret, a person who was as real and valid as any other facet of my identity. The acceptance I found in Polly's world was starkly different from the conditional acceptance I experienced elsewhere. At home and school, I was accepted for being a boy, a role I played with increasing difficulty. But in Polly's sewing room, I was accepted for being Margaret, and this acceptance was liberating and intoxicating. Our sessions, once merely practical engagements, had evolved into profound experiences of self-realization and acceptance. Polly's sewing room became a place where I could peel away the layers of societal expectations and explore the uncharted territories of my identity. Here, I was not just trying on clothes. I was trying on my true self, piece by piece, in a quest for harmony between my inner world and outer expression. This evolution of our sessions from mere dress fittings to personalized tailoring sessions represented my first significant foray into the world of cross-dressing, a journey that was both liberating and daunting. It was a journey that allowed me to not only discover, but also accept the multifaceted nature of my identity, with Polly's unwavering support acting as a beacon, guiding me through the ebbs and flows of self-discovery and acceptance. As the sun sets on this chapter of my life, I find myself reflecting on the journey that began in the quiet, unassuming sewing room of my dear neighbor, Polly. Those afternoons, steeped in the scent of fabric and the warm buzz of the sewing machine, were more than just lessons in dressmaking. They were my initiation into a world where I could finally be myself, unapologetically and freely. Polly, with her gentle guidance and unspoken understanding, did more than alter clothes for me. She tailored a space where I could explore the contours of my identity and drape them in the fabrics of my choosing. Each garment she fashioned specifically for me was a testament to my evolving self, a tangible expression of the person I was becoming. These were not just pieces of clothing, they were armors of confidence and banners of freedom, each stitch interwoven with the threads of self-acceptance and understanding. Through this journey of transformation and acceptance, I discovered the joy of aligning my outer appearance with my inner truth. With Polly's support, I ventured into the depths of my soul, exploring and embracing the complexities of my identity. The freedom to express myself through cross-dressing became a pivotal element of my existence, a liberating experience that transcended the physical act of wearing dresses or applying makeup. Looking back, I realized that these sessions with Polly were the cornerstone of my self-discovery. They were the moments when I was able to peel away the layers of societal expectations and gaze into the mirror of my reality, seeing myself not as the world wanted me to be, but as I truly was. It was in the sanctuary of Polly's sewing room that I found the courage to embrace my identity, to celebrate my uniqueness, and to understand that the essence of who I am is not bound by conventions or norms. As I conclude this recount of my formative years, I am filled with gratitude for the role Polly played in my journey. Her acceptance and support were the catalysts for my transformation, guiding me through the maze of self-doubt and fear and leading me towards a path of self-acceptance and joy. The freedom I found in cross-dressing, the exhilaration of expressing my true self, and the acceptance I received from Polly have been the guiding lights of my existence. They have taught me that the most profound journeys often begin with a single tentative step into the unknown, and that true liberation comes from embracing who we are in all our splendid diversity. In sharing my story, I hope to illuminate the paths of others who walk in similar shoes, seeking the light of understanding and acceptance. My journey with Polly, though deeply personal, is a testament to the universal quest for identity and the boundless joy that comes with living one's truth.